Well, thank you, Amy. It really is inspiring to be back here to see everyone and everyone's leadership to protecting our planet. Um, it is heartwarming to see all the solutions coming here together. And the opportunity to highlight what's happening here in the U.S. and how it relates to Ukraine. Um, because protecting U Ukraine's democracy is protecting our democracy. And the story how elected officials to protect America started working with Ukraine really stems back to when we were pulling out of Afghanistan. When I was deployed to Afghanistan, I would run with the women athletes who are tremendously brave individuals. But unfortunately, because they never had documents with the US, they were going to be left behind. And so I was trying to think, what could I do to help? And of course, I called up a lieutenant colonel who works with the president's office in Ukraine, who I'd known from Nader school. And this uh, amazing leader, Irina Andracht, convinced her general, let's send a plane. And uh, they eventually uh, evacuated 400 of our Afghan allies. And eventually, she led her special forces into Afghanistan. Sadly, almost got killed in the process. They saved her, and they brought 4,000 Afghan allies to safety. And this began a relationship. Sadly, not long after, Putin invaded, and we had to help evacuate her family from uh, the GRU and others chasing. What it began to realize is over and over, when we started to talk with mayors and leaders in the Ukraine administration, is how can we help? And particularly when it came to energy security, it came over and over and over, we need distributed clean energy to make us secure and independent from Putin and other autocratic nations tight hold on fossil fuels. And so what does that mean? Because it's a tremendous urgency right now, and we can't wait till the end of the war to help Ukraine uh, and the individuals fight the battle against being freezing to death. There are heart-wrenching stories of individuals stuck in skyscrapers who are elderly who can't get down because there's not enough water or food to get to, right? And then the opportunity, though, is unbelievable because distributed clean energy can overnight, in some cases, save someone's life. How long do you think it took to repair that solar grid there? Any guesses? Exactly. Someone read the same article. Good job. And the wonderful thing about the technology here is that when we implement it, it can be done rapidly. And so the urgency is right now to bring solar, heat pumps, battery technology, and others. And to do that, it will require a public and a private investment, but it's got to come from the public side leading the way. So we are working with the UK government and the US government to create a clean energy or green energy Marshall Plan in the UK and an energy security Marshall Plan uh, in the US Congress passing. For obvious reasons, they're named differently. But how do we do that, right? There's some very specific things we need to do. And one is there's immediate aid that needs to happen. So with our partners of UK uh, for Ukraine, we're providing solar power and heat pumps to provide that distributed electricity that is so much more resilient, right? As we saw, you could re repair that in two days. And because of the distribution of wind power, even if you can't really take out a wind power plant either, Ukraine actually built a wind power facility during a conflict zone, right? It's truly inspiring what they're doing, but it also shows how resilient they are compared to a single point of failure with a fossil fuel plant. The other part of what we're doing is bringing sister states and sister cities together. This is really important because there are many cities and states in the United States who really would love to work with Ukrainian cities uh, to provide them the media aid they need now, but also long-term, when a energy security Marshall Plan is enacted, it provides the relationships that are already in place to implement it at the local level. Because Ukraine's government's actually done a decent job of distributing control to the local individuals and getting it put through. It also provides a good amount of accountability to make sure these projects get done. And so we've been really happy to work with the state of Hawaii, uh, partnering with Odessa to bring them to, together. So uh, we have a nice photo of beautiful Hawaii loving the Ukraine flag here. So ultimately, protecting Ukraine 
it turns a threat multiplier where we're dependent on fossil fuels into a force multiplier where we're able to help the Ukrainians fight the, the Russians as we move forward because they don't need, for instance, a lot of electric cars right now, but they need a small minivans that you can plug in or buses that then go to the hospital and plug it in and keep everyone alive. Or they go to the command post and it powers the command post in need. Right? That's an operational capability. And then when it comes to the hospitals and other schools and other things to keep them running in a distributed manner that can be independent of the missiles coming in, um, solar and heat pumps are the simple, effective technology combined with great batteries. So this is very, very attainable. And please find me afterward. I'd love to work with you if you have any ideas. One of the challenges, technical assistance too, we have a lot of solar panels but not enough folks to train the Ukrainians to how to install them in places too. Uh, so any creative ideas, please find me after. I'll be here all day tonight. Uh, sadly, I have to leave the next day uh, for another engagement, but I look forward to chatting further. And thank you again, Amy, for the invite.